Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, and I'd like to introduce you to Jumbo Magna Hoop, the perfect complement to the 5x7 Magna Hoop. It comes with a large rectangular opening, medium rectangular opening, and a very narrow rectangular opening. You'll find eight industrial mag magnets that are in each box, along with gripping strips, a DVD, and a step-by-step -step manual so you can get started on using your Jumbo Magna Hoop today. I'd like to share some details about Magna Hoop with you. The metal frame will actually be suspended in the hoop and it is held in place by the inner ring of the hoop. On this version, we have some tabs or bends that are used to suspend the hoop, the, the metal frame into the hoop. Our magnets are two lengths. We have a short one and a tall one and they are used for different fabrics. The short one holds the acrylic frame close to the metal frame, while the tall magnets accommodate a loftier fabric like fleece or terry cloth. I think you'll find lots of uses for these new magnets in your Jumbo Magna Hoop. The narrow rectangular opening of Jumbo Magna Hoop is perfect for any kind of belt or a ribbon, maybe a placket, but here I have a karate belt, which is pretty lofty. You know, this is a quilted belt, and I want to show you uh, some easy tips on how to embroider that. I have already put the name on it. Now, if I were um, a little smarter than I was this morning when I set up for this uh, demonstration, I would have kept my stabilizer, my used stabilizer, already in the hoop to show you this trick. I would have stitched Hampton right here and then very carefully just tear away the belt, leaving pretty much a big hole over there. And then I take the, metal, the acrylic frame of Magna Hoop and place it over here in this unused portion of the stabilizer. And again, I could take my pencil, draw the opening, take the other end of the belt that I now want to put Hampton's last name in place, and I just position it like so. Now, because this is so lofty, I'm going to use the tall magnets, and the tall magnets will help accommodate this heavy fabric. So, once I have that holding down that end, I put the tall magnets here. I could put two more on the sides to hold this in place nice and secure, and then I am ready to embroider. Let me show you an interesting feature about Magna Hoop, Jumbo Magna Hoop, that will enable you to hoop difficult fabrics without harming the fabric at all. I've embroidered Merry Christmas on this very luxurious velvet ribbon. Now this velvet ribbon was purchased in the dressmaker supply store instead of just a craft and hobby place. So it is truly velvet and kind of uh, sensitive, I would say, when it comes to hooping. So. If I'm going to hoop that ribbon, I really would like to know exactly where to place it in the hoop. So of course, I've already inserted my metal frame of Magna Hoop, and my stabilizer is hooped in the standard hoop. I'm positioning the um, acrylic frame in, on top of the stabilizer, and I'm just gonna trace right inside that opening. And then when I remove the acrylic frame, geez, I know exactly where to land my velvet. So I take my velvet and I center it in that marked opening and I will slide the acrylic frame in place. Now I'm going to give you another little tip when you are working with really delicate fabrics you might want to take a scrap of tear away or a cutaway stabilizer and put it underneath the magnet and that will protect the velvet from those strong magnets because they really are very strong. So once that's down, I can position, you know, make sure I'm happy with the placement of my ribbon, take another piece of tearaway or cutaway stabilizer and insert it into that opening and I am ready to embroider. A very common item that we embroider on is terry cloth towels. And I'm sure as an avid embroiderer, you will make tons of them. So let me show you how I like to do it. You'll notice that this monogram here is positioned perfectly on the towel. It is square, and if I had a whole set here, every single one would match. And let me show you how. I use templates that I created that are part of the perfect placement kit. And in here are 15 templates, common items that we embroider on every day. Let me show you the towel. We take the terry cloth towel and we fold it in half 
vertically to find our center. And I just stick a pin in the center, just to designate where the center is. I'm not actually pinning the fold. And then I take the template. In this case, it's a hand towel with border, because that's what I'm embroidering on. I position the towel and the template with the horizontal line on the top of the border and the vertical line aligned with the pin, which marks the center of my towel. I then take a Target sticker. Oh, and these great little stickers are so handy. They have a crosshair printed on them with an arrow pointing towards the top of the design. Once that's in place, I can remove the template and the pin, and now I have the perfect landing spot for my monogram. Let me show you how to hoop it with Magna Hoop. Now that I have my landing spot marked on my towel, it's time to hoop. I have tearaway stabilizer hooped in my jumbo hoop. Now I'm just dropping in the metal frame of jumbo Magna Hoop. And now I want to place that towel in the hoop. And you'll notice this, as soon as we do that, we no longer can see the hoop, so we're not exactly sure if we're square in the hoop. Let me give you a, a, a little tip on how to do that. I fold up the border because that's a straight line. And then I take that straight edge and place it on a straight edge of the hoop. I just want to make sure that I'm parallel with the straight edge of the hoop. And then when I flip back my towel, I'm square in the hoop. Next, I will take the acrylic frame of Magna Hoop and place it into the opening, and I'm using the tall magnets because this is a lofty fabric. And I am, if I feel that I have too much play, I can remove that magnet and just pull that terry cloth a little bit so that it's nice and smooth. And then, of course, I put my two side magnets in place, and boy, is that secure in the hoop, and I am ready to embroider. Jumbo Magma Hoop is really great for embroidering on blue jeans, you know, because you have a lot of bulk. It's uh, close to the edge often when you're embroidering on the hem of a pair of capris such as these. Now we've gone and we've opened up the whole inseam so that we can lay the design area flat in the hoop. First I have hooped cutaway stabilizer. This is a poly mesh and I like this on my denim because it's a very strong stabilizer yet comfortable next to the skin. So I place my, no, I don't want to do that yet. I got to put the metal frame of Magna Hoop in place. And so easy to do. It just slides right into the hoop and sits on top of that inner ring. Now it's time for me to position my blue jeans. And I want to make sure that the design area is going to fit into the opening. And I can feel that. I can feel the metal frame underneath. So I know I'm good to go. Now I insert the acrylic frame into the hoop, and I want to show you a little trick. You know, your Magna Hoop comes with eight magnets, and the bronze ones, the, br the bronze magnets are the short magnets, and they really grip that acrylic. So I'm going to go ahead and put two down there since there's no fabric there. And now I am going to put a tall magnet up at this end because it's cr it is holding a layer of denim and also straddling a, a side seam, which is a double layer of denim. And then I put my second tall magnet there. Now, you know, there's a little bit of play on the side, so let's go ahead and put in some more magnets. Again, the short ones, if there's a little bit of play, go ahead and put a short magnet in place. See how that grips it nice and tight. It's okay to use a combination of magnets. I think you'll find many uses and different applications for both the tall and the short magnets. So use them. Jumbo Magna Hoop is perfect for embroidering a long, narrow design on the edge of a table runner, such as this item that I have embroidered here. But often, when we want to embroider something like that, we have to use a really big piece of stabilizer when truly we only need a narrow strip. So, let me show you the secret to Jumbo Magna Hoop. We have our inner hoop inserted into our outer hoop, and then I'm just going to drop in the metal frame of Magna Hoop, and then you'll notice that my table runner is uh, stabilized with basically scraps of fusible tearaway stabilizer. And you'll notice that there's some tabs, some extensions of stabilizer that go beyond the table runner, and that's because those extensions are going to be held in place by the acrylic frame. So let me go ahead and position that acrylic frame on top 
of my table runner. And that looks like that is nailed pretty well. Now I want to show you that it's probably best to select the short magnet down here in this area because there's nothing there but stabilizer and that's going to give you a good strong grip. So I'll put all of those in this area and then I'll use two of my tall, tall, two of my tall magnets over here because there's actually fabric underneath. Now I most certainly um, extend my table runner away from the opening so that this portion of the frame helps hold the table runner in place. And you, I can just pick this up, go to the machine, embroider the design, and I'll be done in no time. This loosely woven afghan is w the wonderful place to land a cross-stitch design with your embroidery machine, but doing so creates a challenge or two to the machine embroiderer. Number one, we have the loose weave, and we are also want to make sure that we keep this weave uh, straight and on grain because if we hoop it in a standard hoop there's a good chance that it could get distorted. So for stabilizer I want something that I can fuse to the wrong side of this item and then remove after. So I have selected a fusible tear away. You can see on this design I have already torn off most of the excess stabilizer. But since this is fused in place, the area underneath of it is stable and on grain and ready to be embroidered. So how do I use magnet hoop with it? So easy. I just insert the inner ring to the outer ring of my standard hoop and then slide the metal frame in place. Once that's in place, it's time to drop in the blanket. And this really pretty blanket has uh, squares. <laughs> that are wonderful alignment marks to make sure that you are square in the hoop because a single design that's off even a little bit can be quite glaring. So I can feel the metal frame underneath and once I'm happy with the position of my square, and I can just fudge it over a little bit, and once it's in place, I just take my magnets and pop them in the end. Of course, that's my extra hand. I think we talked about that earlier. And then, oh, you know, I might as well go ahead and use all the magnets that I can. Heavens, they're there. I know where they are, and they most certainly help me keep this in place. Now, I'm ready to go put my embroidery design right here dead center, and I'm ready to embroider. One of my favorite features for jumbo magnet hoop is to quilt with magnet hoop. You don't need any stabilizer. Isn't that wonderful? We've been trying to quilt our quilts with our embroidery machines for a long time, and boy, does that present some challenges. But because the metal frame of Magna Hoop is suspended in the hoop, I don't need any stabilizer at all. Look at this beautiful quilted placemat that was done in just two quick hoopings. And how about this quilt that we're just starting to embroider? After all, Magna Hoop is brand new to us too. Here's a large corner design, and this narrow quilting design in the border here was done with the narrow opening, or I guess it was the, me the medium rectangular opening of Jumbo Magna Hoop. So how do we do it? Well, I have a sample of that quilted placemat right here. Now, it is a dish towel that's been folded in half, so we have two layers of fabric and a uh, lightweight batting, cotton batting in between, sandwiched in between, like a regular quilt sandwich. My metal frame of Magna Hoop is in the hoop, and then I just position my fabric, my quilt sandwich in the hoop, and I place my acrylic frame inside, and I can feel that it's in place. Now, for a quilt, I probably want to use those tall magnets, the silver ones, and I can pull on the fabric ever so slightly to make sure that it's adjoined exactly where I want it. And I'll go ahead and I'll use all four of them so that I have perfect positioning. Now I take this to the machine and I quilt my quilt sandwich. 